So in my last lecture, we solved the time dependent Schrodinger's equation pi. This time, we'll solve for the time independent Schrodinger equation for a special case that is particle in a one dimensional infinite potential well. You see, this is an infinite well, which implies this vertical axis is the energy, and this is the position of the particle. So let us say we have a particle of mass m inside the well, whose boundaries are of infinite height. This implies that the particle is confined within the region of from x equal to 0 to x equal to L. So that is the width of this well. So the particle cannot be outside. So the time independent Schrodinger equation was minus h cut square by 2m. If you remember the, inf uh, the Schrodinger's equation time independent, it was minus h cut square by 2m. In brackets, it was del square eta by del x square. And we had the y square and z square terms, the y dependence and the z dependence term. It was del square eta by del y square and del square eta by del z square. So we had this plus z eta. And that was equal to z eta. But remember, we have taken a special case where it is one dimensional and we have considered that dimension to be along x. So we will not have these two terms because eta does not depend on y and z. So we have this. And another assumption is the particle is free inside. That is no forces are acting on the particle. So there is nobody else inside the particle, uh, inside the box. So the potential energy of the particle inside the box is zero. So we have this equation. So we put this v equal to zero. Now, if we rearrange this equation, we have del square eta by del x square as minus 2m by h cut square e into eta. Now, we put this 2m by h cut square as k square. Let's say. We'll find out k in a moment. So, the second order differential equation for time independent case will be del square eta by del x square equal to minus k square eta, where k square is given by this, 2m by h cut square e. So the solution to this differential equation, where we, we would get eta as a function of x, is this. You can easily check this solution by putting back in this equation and see that the solution is satisfying this differential equation. In this equation, a and b are unknown constants of integration, which we can find out using the boundary conditions. So let us see what the boundary conditions are. See, physically we know that the particle is inside the box. That is, the particle cannot be outside. So the probability of finding the particle outside is zero. And we know that probability, like I said the probability density, if the wave function for the particle is psi, then the probability density is given by psi star psi. In this case, it will not be psi, but it is eta star eta. The probability of finding the particle anywhere in space. We know that just outside the box, the probability of finding the particle is zero. That is eta just outside the box, that is just to the left of this boundary is zero. 
and we know that the wave function has a property that it must be continuous. So if it is zero just outside the box, then it must be zero right at the boundary. So at x equal to zero, eta must be equal to zero. So if you put x equal to zero in this equation, the sine zero is zero and cos zero is one. So we have a and on the left hand side, we must have eta equal to zero. So a must be equal to zero. So the first constant, we have the value for the first constant a, which is zero. So eta is basically d sine kx. Now for the second boundary condition. Again, eta must be zero to the right of this boundary because the particle cannot be outside. The probability of finding the particle outside is zero. So eta is zero outside, which implies that if eta is part of the wave function, it must also be continuous at the boundary. So if eta is zero at just outside the boundary, it must be zero at the boundary. If it is zero just outside the boundary, it must be zero at the boundary. So at x equal to L, which is this side, eta must again be zero. So by putting L instead of x, we have sine KL must be equal to zero because B cannot be zero. Otherwise this whole eta would be zero which doesn't have any physical significance. So sine KL by putting X equal to L must be equal to zero. And sine KL is zero when KL is equal to N pi, that is integral multiple of pi, where N is an integer. The lowest value of N can be one. It cannot be zero. Because if N is zero, then irrespective of the value of X, sine KX would be zero. Again, even inside the wave function would have a zero value, which is again physically irrelevant. That is the particle is not even inside the box. So n cannot be zero, but n can take or start values, start taking values from one. So it is an integer. So k is basically n pi by L. So from this boundary condition, we found out k is n pi by L from this equation. So we have eta is B sine instead of K, we are putting N pi by L X. Still, we have not found what B is. So let us find out what B is. This we can find out by normalizing the wave function. We know that every wave function which represents a particle must be normalized. And we know from the normalization condition, since it is a one dimensional case, we know the normalization condition is from minus infinity to plus infinity. That is the total probability of finding the particle. Psi star psi. In this case, I'm writing only dx because it is a one dimensional case must be equal to one. This is the probability of finding the particle within the elemental length of dx. So the integration implies the total probability of finding the particle within all space and the total probability must always be equal to 100%. Again, we do not require to put the limits from minus infinity to plus infinity because we already know that the particle is inside the box. So we put the limit from zero to L and instead of psi, we put eta. So it becomes eta star eta dx must be equal to 1. And eta was equal to b sine kx. So, and since again, eta is a real quantity, is a real function, its complex conjugate will be same as eta. So we just square it. So it is b square sine square kx dx must be equal to 1 from 0 to L. So let us take b square out and let us multiply and divide by 2 so that we get 2 sine square kx and we can write 2 sine square kx as 1 minus cos 2x to cos 2 kx and all of this must be equal to 1 the total probability. So let us integrate this. So this becomes dx and this is this integration. 
the second integration from 0 to L we have equal to 0. We can easily check this and this must be equal to 1. So we have b square by 2 only this part is left 0 to L dx must be equal to 1. So by integrating this and putting the proper limits we have b square L by 2 must be equal to 1 which implies b square must be equal to 2 by L. So we get beta equal to root 2 by L. This is what we were looking for. Thus, we have the final solution eta x as root 2 by L sin n pi L by x. This is our final solution for the wave function of a particle in a one dimensional potential well, infinite potential well. Let us see the energy of the particle. And this is where quantum mechanics would be very much different from classical mechanics. We know that k square was equal to 2me by x square. This must be a square. This must be on top. This must be here. Sorry. So e can be written as h cut square k square by 2m, where we know that k was n pi by l where n can take values 1, 2 and 3. So putting k here the value for k square we have the energy values for a particle in a one dimensional box as n square pi square h square, square by 2 ml square. Now here is what is very surprising. The energy values are quantized for a particle in a box, which implies that the particle, the minimum energy will be when n is equal to 1. So the minimum energy or the ground state, this is what we called the ground state. The ground state energy would be n equal to 1 is pi square h cut square by 2 nl square. This is for n equal to 1. The next value that the particle would take is when n is equals to 2. That is, here we put n equal to 2. So we have 4 pi square h cut square by 2 n l square. The next state would be 9 pi square h cut square by 2 n l square since n value would be 3. So this implies that the particle in the one dimensional box cannot have energy between this and this. It cannot have the energy between this and this. So the energy levels for particles are quantized, which is a huge departure from classical thinking, where a particle inside the box can have any energy whatsoever. So the energy levels are like the rungs of a ladder but they are not equally spaced. So this is the gap. The particle cannot have energy levels between this and this. It cannot have. Either it can have energy over here or it can have energy this. Then it can have energy this. It cannot have energies in between these energy levels. So the energy levels are quantized. This is how the energy levels and the wave functions would look like. This is the wave function when n is equals to 1. Remember, our eta was root 2 by L sine from the previous slide n pi by L into x. So this is the wave function. 
So the wave functions for the first three levels are shown. This is for n equal to one. Put n equal to one. You have sine pi x by l. This is how the wave function would look like. This is for n equal to two. Put two pi x by l. This is how the wave function would look like. This is for n equal to three. Putting three over here. This is these are all etas. This is eta one. N equal to one. This is eta two. And this is eta three. These are the energy levels. You can see pi square h cut square by two m l square. Four pi square h cut square by two m l square. And nine pi square h cut square by two m l square. Here I have shown only the first three energy levels. So the particle inside can have this energy level. Then it can have this energy level. In between, it is forbidden. The particle cannot have any energies in between. Again, between this and this, the particle cannot have any energies. So this is a this is a huge departure from classical thinking. So let us say, if I tell you that there is a ball in the room, this is a one-dimensional room for for just for thinking purposes. And let us say you have a ball in this room. Let us say you have a ball in this room. And if I ask you what can be the energy values of this ball, you would say that the energy values it can have any energy value, any. The ball inside the room can have any energy value uh, from starting from zero to any value. But quantum mechanics says no. The ball can have this energy, then it can have this energy. In between, it cannot have energies. So, which one is true? Is classical mechanics true, or is quantum mechanics true? Let us understand this. The energy value is this. So, let us see the energy difference. See, the energy gap would be of the order of this: pi square h cut square by two m l square. This is the delta e. The energy gap that I'm talking about between two consecutive energy levels. So between this, these two energy levels, this is delta E that I'm talking about. Let us say delta E is of the order of this pi square h cut square by two m l square. So let us just check the order for a ball. Let us say you have a ball of let us say hundred gram mass in our day to day life. We encounter masses of this order, hundred gram, which is, let us say, ten to the power of minus one kg. And the length of the room is, let us say, of the order of this length, that is L, in this case, is let us say one meter. We know Planck's constant is of the Planck's constant is of the order of ten to the power of minus thirty four. Here h, remember h was h cut was h by two pi. We are just considering the orders. Do not bother about the numerical values. Just bother about the orders. So h cut has an order of ten to the power of minus thirty four. So h cut square would be of the order of ten to the power of minus sixty eight divided by the mass of the ball is of the order of ten to the power of minus one kg and length of the ball, uh, the length of the room is around one meter. So you can see the difference in energy levels delta E is of the order of ten to the power of Minus sixty-seven joules. So, can you imagine the amount of spacing between the two? It is sixty-seven zeros before one. How small is the gap between two consecutive energy levels when we are considering our day-to-day -day life? Scenarios where we have a ball and a room of length one meter. The gap is so small between two consecutive energy levels, between two consecutive energy levels, that these levels 
seem to be continuous to us they are so close that to us it seems as if the ball can take any energy value whereas the ball can take only quantized energy values but the gap between the two consecutive levels in case of our day to day life problems is so small that we are unable to measure it let's consider this for an electron inside an atom so the atom has a size of 10 to the power of minus 10 meters that is the size of an atom that is l and again for an atom this is for a ball let us say and for an atom or for an electron inside an atom delta e is of the order of again h cut square is of the order of 10 to the power of minus 68 mass of the electron is 10 to the power of minus 31 kg it's of the order of 10 to the power of minus 31 kg into the length in which it is confined that is the length of the atom or the size of the atom is 10 to the power of minus 10 meter so it is length square in the denominator let me rub a bit so that it is visible So length square would become 10 to the power of minus 20 because it is 10 to the power of minus 10. So this delta E for an for an electron comes out to be of the order of 10 to the power of minus 17. You see the denominator is 10 to the power of minus 51. And this is 10 to the power of minus 68. This is 10 to the power of minus 17. You can see this spacing for an electron is 10 to the power of 50 times greater than this spacing for a ball. So this spacing between two consecutive level increases by this much for an electron. So this quantization due to quantum mechanics is manifested when we go to the subatomic level. That is, we go to the level of electrons and atoms. Then and only then we can observe that the quantization is true. When we deal with our day-to-day -day life materials like a ball and a room, there is still quantization. Quantum mechanics is always true. Classical mechanics is just the limiting case of quantum mechanics. In case of a ball in a room, we find that the energy levels for a ball or the energy that the ball can take are continuous. But actually they are not continuous, they are also quantized. But the spacing between two energy levels in case of a ball in a room, that is in our day-to-day -day life, is so small, that is 10 to the power of minus 67 as we saw, that we are unable to see that it is quantized. We see as if that it can take any energy values. They are so close to each other. This spacing increases this much amount, 10 to the power of 50 times in case of an electron. So this spacing increases and this quantization of energy level is manifested in case of an electron or for any subatomic particle. So if you go down in size from our ball to an electron, we see clearly that quantum mechanics is the right theory of nature and not classical mechanics. So the very first consequence of quantum mechanics is the energy levels are discrete. A particle cannot take any energy value but it can take only certain energy values and in between it is forbidden to take that energy value. It cannot have that energy value. And the next weird thing about quantum mechanics is let's say the particle if if somebody asks you what is the minimum energy of this ball the answer in classical mechanics would be a zero the minimum energy of the ball can be zero but in quantum mechanics the minimum energy that is the ground state energy let me rub this the 
the ground state energy is pi square h cut square by 2 n h square. This is the minimum energy of a particle in a box and not 0 because n value is 1 n value is 1 and not 0 n cannot take a 0 value it is forbidden so the minimum energy of a particle in a box is not 0 in case of quantum mechanics which is in classical mechanics it says that it is 0 why because it is so small this value is so small that in ordinary life we just we are just not able to measure that value so it seems as if that the ball can have a minimum of zero energy but no the ball does have a minimum energy which is immeasurable but the moment we go to an electron the moment our system shifts to an electron this value is high because the mass of the electron is very very small as compared to the mass of the ball so these are the two consequences these are the two consequences of quantum mechanics and these are the consequences that that indicates a great departure between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics so thank you once again